If you're a Linux user, there's a good chance you're using GNOME. GNOME is the default desktop environment on Ubuntu and Fedora, two of the preeminent Linux distributions. Today I'm going to show you how to execute changes from the command line and make them declarative, allowing you to save them, share them, version control them, and take them with you as you hop distros or manage a fleet of machines. How is GNOME configured? Some limited options are available in the settings application. Uh, we can launch it from the top bar by hitting this gear icon. And uh, we can also search for it by searching for settings in the activities overview, just as you would with any other application. There's also an application called Tweaks, um, which uh, despite the fact that it's very commonly installed, does not ship by default. Tweaks offers further but different changes from settings, so it doesn't function as a replacement for it, but more as a kind of a strange add-on. Um, how are GNOME settings stored? GNOME settings are stored in a system called dconf, a key-based configuration system similar to the Windows registry. A lot of GNOME software begins with G, GDM, GTK, Glib, but dconf is named after the dbus daemon, and although it's almost 15 years old now, it did evolve from an earlier predecessor which was named gconf. But dconf settings can be viewed and manipulated with another application, which I've also installed on this VM, called dconf editor. And uh, viewing it, we can definitely see a similarity with Windows Registry now. Uh, just like the Windows Registry program, uh, dconf editor displays dconf settings as a nested hierarchy of folders. Let's navigate to one such place where we can find some interesting settings. Uh, going to org gnome desktop interface, uh, among other settings, we can change the mouse cursor size, for example. Um, let's manually change it just to demonstrate how we can change things in dconf editor. And you can say pretty much uh, immediately the mouse cursor increased in size. I actually like uh, larger mouse cursors. Maybe this is a good size for me. So I'll get back to this setting. But uh, for now, we're going to return it to the default. And you can see that the changes made in dconf editor take effect very quickly. Going a little deeper, let's open up the terminal. The first file I'm going to show you uh, is the dconf profile. By navigating to Etsy dconf slash profile, uh, we can s we're confronted with a couple of pretty simple text files. These are basically lists of dconf databases. So each of these databases is uh, basically labeled as a system DB or user DB. And in some systems, you'll also see service DB, DB even though it doesn't appear here. Um, the database is labeled user DB, or rather the one database labeled user db are found in the user's home directory under dot config slash dconf um, we're going to have a lot more to do with that later but for now i'm going to show you the system databases under etsy dconf slash db so uh when we run ls we see that every database listed in the profile uh and then some is present in this directory um these databases are binary. They're not text files. We can't read them from the terminal using tools like cat. Uh, so how do we configure GNOME from the terminal? Not to get too complicated, but there are two command line utilities that are useful for changing GNOME configuration. There is dconf and g settings. GNOME recommends the use of g settings only as the higher level API with dconf being the lower level utility uh, with fewer safeguards and more of a possibility for error. So except for one important exception, I'm going to be showing you G settings in this video. And unlike the graphical tools, uh, most Linux systems probably come with both of these utilities installed anyway, since they're kind of integral to GNOME. Let's talk about the structure of dconf databases. I said before that dconf is key-based. What does that mean? That means that settings are stored in a tree-like tree -like hierarchy, with key value pairs organized under schemas, kind of like uh, branches holding many leaves. The branches of this tree are schemas, each of which have a varying number of leaves or key value pairs. G settings is great for uh, displaying dconf information and exploring this tree. Uh, 
Using G settings, I can display all the available schemas on the system or show me every branch, basically. Uh, do you remember the setting I found in Deconf Editor, the one that adjusted the cursor size? Let's look for it in here. I'm going to grep for org.gnome.desktop.interface. And there it is. That's our branch. Now that we have this schema name, we can drill down deeper. We can look for every available key within that uh, within that schema. And notice that we do have tab completion in G settings. A lot of different uh, leaves on this branch. Um, we can drill it down further. Uh, the key that I adjusted earlier was cursor size, but I'm just going to search for a cursor. And you see that this is one method of uh, exploring our tree for different settings to change. Uh, we see that in this schema, we have multiple options relating to the mouse cursor. Um, we have a schema, we have a key. Finally, we can get to the value itself. So we specify the get subcommand org.gnome.desktop.interface as well as cursor size and there it is 24. Finally we can use G settings to set a new value to that key as we did before. I'm going to uh, make the window a little bit smaller so we can see that the cursor is currently at size 24 looking small. As soon as I hit uh, enter on the terminal the cursor is uh, made larger and we can confirm that the command did take effect by using G settings itself we see that the new size in the dconf database is 48 and then we can undo that change uh, just as quickly we can set it back to 24 we can watch the mouse cursor change size just as I press enter and again we're going to confirm the uh, size is 24 that's great if we already know where to find the exact schema and key that's of interest to us. Uh, that'll happen at most once or zero times in your life. But what do we do if we have no clue about the schema or key? Do we just grep through every schema and key and hope for the best? This is when I introduce the deconf utility again that we're not supposed to be using. Using deconf, uh, we can actually watch for changes at the base of this tree, at the trunk. Uh, Hitting enter on this command on deconf watch, uh, be, the utility will watch for changes. It won't give us the shell back right away until I quit that command using control C. But, uh, you know, in the top bar, I can engage the dark style, the dark theme, and then disengage it. And we see that uh, deconf has output showing us the schema here, uh, you know, displayed in a different format and the key this is the key value well this is this is the schema of course the final item is the key and then this is the value a couple of points of order obviously the uh, schema is presented in a different format so instead of dots uh, as you know separating the components of the schema we have slashes making it look very much like a path in a file system um, second point of order, we can actually do this in G settings, but again, G settings uh, requires us to know the, the schema, at least, um, uh, as luck would have it, we're actually dealing with the same schema throughout this entire video. So using the monitor subcommand, I can provide that same schema and monitor for changes. Uh, just like with deconf, it's going to sit here waiting for changes and display output. So I'm going to engage the dark style and then disengage it. And we see that we're getting a very similar output in a different format. Um, it doesn't display the schema because uh, we already know the schema, uh, which we provided when we invoke the command. Here is where I introduce the key file. The key file is an INI format file that's going to be compiled into the deconf database. It has the same format as uh, config files that you'll find associated with Git, like Git config or with uh, Network Manager. Um, let's go back to the user deconf database I showed you earlier in uh, .config slash deconf. Uh, as I mentioned, this is one of the databases uh, listed in the deconf profile. This one is associated with my user. Um, 
similar to how we saw with the system databases, I'm going to create a user.d, a directory named after that same database and uh, kind of its sibling. And in here is where I'm going to be putting these configs, um, these GNOME, con GNOME style configs, INI format configs called key files. Um, the name doesn't really matter. I'll just call it custom. And we saw that depending on the tool we use, the schema can be displayed in various ways. Um, G settings delimited the schema's components with dots and deconf used slashes. We're going to use deconf's uh, convention of using slashes in between each component of the schema. And we're going to set cursor size here to 48. Save and exit. I'm going to cat it out just to confirm that uh, it says what it says. And I'm going to use G settings to confirm that the system is currently configured to 24. So like I said, uh, you can kind of call this a config file. It's not actually config because GNOME won't uh, refer to this file to inform its configuration. What we have to do is we have to compile it into the database. And as we, as I mentioned before, the databases are binary. So there's no real GNOME config. GNOME keeps all of its configuration within these databases that are binary format. Um, <clears throat> so how do we recompile? It's pretty simple. Deconf compile, and then we specify the database as well as the directory containing the key files. Once we do this, uh, we're gonna do sudo deconf update. We have to use sudo because we're gonna be uh, updating the system databases as well. And uh, just for completion, I'm gonna try to confirm that G settings shows the new setting took effect. It didn't yet. Let's try again. Let's try to compile it and then update again. And uh, now it does take effect. So I'm not sure why sometimes uh, it needs kind of a second try, um, but uh, that seems to be the case. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to uh, restart. Um, now the documentation indicates that you should just be able to log out and log back in. Um, I found that that's kind of buggy and uh, this VM apparently has some issues anyway. So I'm just gonna restart for now. And we should be back up and running promptly. And with any luck, uh, when we log back in, we're gonna see that we have a larger mouse cursor which was specified in the key file. And there we go. So just to confirm, using G settings, and uh, we have a value of 48. That's all for today. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.